Riveting content, empowering your life. Welcome to The Sphere. This episode is sponsored by Elite Dental Wellness. At Elite Dental Wellness, Dr. Ashandra Batiste understands that one of the biggest obstacles is dental fear. The vision at Elite Dental Wellness is to ensure every patient is treated with respect, ultimate care, patience, and love. Call us today to make an appointment at area code 713-789-8680. Looking to advertise? Join the Sphere's vast demographic reach of thousands of people all over the world. Send an email today to advertise at thesphere.tv or call us at area code 832-772-7789. KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Do you desire to belong to a community of unity? Visit kogpassion.com to learn more about the Unleash Your Dopeness movement. <laughs> this is LaShonda Johnson, certified financial educator and also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance here back at you on the Money Factor and the Sphere TV. Well, that was a mouthful. Hey, everybody. This is Tony Sanders, certified financial education instructor and also the co-founder of the Houston Housewives of Finance. It's Monday, Mondays, and we are back. We are yes. back with some great information, um, some news that you can use. Yes. Mm. Yes. So, you know, um, we try to bring you guys the latest and greatest. First of all, Tony, we had a great weekend. We did. We yeah, had a great weekend. Had a great weekend. Got a lot um got a lot of specific training out in Austin, Marble Falls, Texas, so we could uh come back and be vibrant and ready to share with you guys how to become better personal money managers. Absolutely. That that's yes. that was really good. And really so good. Another thing, I don't know if y'all noticed, but check out my D, the diva to my left over here. Uh -huh. She's on my left. She's got her sharp do back. Yeah, I cut my hair <laughs> off again. I think I'm going to go just a little bit shorter. You know, it's hot, hot as hell here in Texas, baby. So yeah. the wigs just wasn't working out for your girl. You know, the <laughs> personal summers and a wig don't go together. <laughs> don't go together. But hey, I, I like it. It's cool. And hey, let's. Let's see what happens. Yeah, what speaking there. of diva, I know you guys know what's in the, you know, what's in the news. Mm -hmm. You know, what's in the news? Well, the biggest talk of the town right now is our queen of soul, uh, Miss Aretha Franklin. Absolutely. Uh, passed away. Definitely, you know, um, it, you know, our the industry is definitely going to miss her. Uh, but she left a lifetime legacy of music mm -hmm. that we all are so grateful to have because a uh, man she was certainly the queen of of r b and soul uh, when it comes to uh, music her voice mm -hmm. uh, will transcend absolutely nothing I, I don't know anything like it all of our legends there you know they're specific to their own and whitney houston was specific to her own mm -hmm. but they definitely earned those titles um the thing that's unfortunate is that our queen of soul passed away without a will yeah and uh, when I saw that, I was kind of shocked. I was like, wow, okay. And I was shocked because there was time. I mean, she's not, it, it wasn't like a sudden death. Right, right. And so, you know, it brought me to ask, you know, who's in your camp? Um, and also, there was, she's been sick, she was sick for like two years. Wow. So there was plenty of time to start getting her affairs in order. Yeah. So let's go to this article. Hey, you know what? Before before we go to the article, and something else that you need to know, too, about Aretha is that when she performed, uh, she was paid in cash. Get out. Yes. She, she the Aretha, the, the, she wasn't a queen of soul for nothing. She, wow. she, she requested to be paid in cash. Even all up until this I, point? I, po I posted that article, and, wow. you know, um, initially they were saying that her net worth was about $60 million. Now it's estimated to be about $80 million. Yeah. So when I heard that she didn't have a will, I thought, wow, you made some, some good business decisions. But towards the end, like you said, why didn't she put something in place? Why yeah. didn't she let her last wishes be known? I mean, and like I said, who's in your camp? 
you know, somebody should have definitely advised her. But anyway, let's go to the article. Mm. The article is going to discuss it. So at the beginning, uh, it said Aretha Franklin dead at 76, remembering the Queen of Soul. Queen of Soul Aretha Franklin uh, it, uh, has died at the age of 76. Here's a look back in her life and career. Legendary singer Aretha Franklin reportedly did not put together a will before she died from advanced pancreatic cancer last week. Something experts warn um, can create stress for intended beneficiaries and even burn cash. Yes, burn Absolutely. cash because it's very expensive. Uh, Franklin was 76 when she passed, and her personal lawyer said uh, was after her for a number of years to create one, but she never got around to it. Wow. So that goes back to, Tony, something that we talk about a lot. Mm. When you guys come to us and say, oh, I'm good, I'm good, or, you know, I'm busy, or I, I don't have time. I don't have time. And so, you know, we can we have to make time for these type of things. And so we're talking about 76 years of life, most of that being a, you know, very prominent, uh, successful singer and entertainer right. mm -hmm. because she started at 18 18 years of and age. so from 18 to 76 you didn't have time right right it's unfortunate and i, and I like what it's you said too like well, who was in her camp Who's that didn't camp? that didn't advise her that you know you you have quite a bit and you need to um have this written down especially when she was in the advanced stages of her illness mm -hmm then that's when somebody's got to kind of creep up on the side and say, you know, hey, sis, we got we to gotta put a will in place. Right. And yet not, um, not only that, th this, this just reminds me of Prince. Uh, yeah. Prince, too, um, did not have a will. And, um, wow. And he was a $300 million estate. $300 million. Yeah. He trumped Aretha's estate quite a bit, and he didn't have one. So now I see where her attorney said, you know, he kept he was after her and after her about it. One thing, we cannot make you guys do anything. You know, you sure we right. know how that works mm -hmm. because we are after you and after you and after you to sit down and get a plan, uh, which also, by the way, includes a will. And I don't have time. I'm going to get to it. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm good. You know. Oh, you know, whatever. E-I-O. Mm. You know. Yeah, that's something that we learned this weekend. That, and, you know, and we hear it a lot. all these excuses we've got to stop making excuses we've got to take care of business you know and so even if um there's a restriction on funds for you to be able to do it it actually can be done in an affordable way that's why you have to reach out to us i'm lashonda j at houstonhousewivesoffinance.com and i'm tony s at houstonhousewivesoffinance.com you can reach us on all our social media platforms including instagram we're on twitter we're on meetup we're on facebook of course as the houston housewives of finance official, official. if it doesn't say official it's, it's not, not us. us definitely you, not us please. right you you, you, def <laughs> you definitely have the creative plan so in my yeah. mind this is what i'm thinking that you guys are probably thinking well i don't have 80 million i don't have 300 million whatever it is that you have let your last wishes be known if that means that you have underage children who gets the kids mm -hmm. if that means that if in, a, in the event that you get sick who makes those decisions for you for your health there's so many other things that we're just not thinking about and this show is going to be awesome for that because that's what we're going to talk about through mm -hmm. this what is a will why what happens because people have asked me that since all this happened people have actually asked me tony what happens when you don't have a will? So mm -hmm. what's the big deal? Well, we're going to talk about it today. Absolutely. A lot happens. about it today. So if I were you, I would be sharing this show mm -hmm. right about now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the article, Tony. You want to pick up from there? Absolutely. It says the singer's four sons are said to have, fil have filed documents uh, with the court on Tuesday listing themselves as interested parties. Here are some things to know about wills and trusts. What happens when you have no plan in place? Uh, well... Let's talk about it. Wills versus trust. A will is a document that outlines how your assets and monies will be transferred to the beneficiary at the time of death. The transfer takes place immediately in most cases mm -hmm. or at most over this span of months, depending on the assets. By using a will, your finances will become a part of a public record so people can see assets that you had and what decisions have been made regarding the division of those assets. Dave Hanley, CEO and founder of The Will and the Trust Creation app, tomorrow told 
Fox business. Wow. So one one thing that people have to understand, no matter what it is, I mean, you, you have to have something. Yeah. You have to have something in place. Those are your last wishes. What What's going to happen to the things that you have? And I'm thinking, man, now all your business is out there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but especially for... You know, people like Aretha Franklin. Entertainers and people who have that um, Um, kind of money. Man, it's and and we're going to look at it further in the show, but you're going to see the bigger the estate, the more it costs Mm -hmm. to try to figure out what is going to happen. Mm -hmm. So this is a part of your final um, expenses or your final strategy or your exit strategy. I I like that. Your your, your exit strategy. Yeah. We're all going to take an exit. Mm. You know, we're going to exit stage left or stage right or whatever. We're going to exit. So, but when we exit, we're Mm. leaving things behind. What, where are they going to go? Who's going to, what, what's going to happen to those things? And so it doesn't matter the size (laughs) of your assets. It just matters that you account for them. And so our, uh, workshop even discusses that. That's workshop number four, retirement planning mm-hmm. and wealth preservation. We discuss the will and some things that you didn't even know when you're going into a new blended family situation. Mm-hmm. We discuss these things. So you guys got to come to the workshops. This Absolutely. is the perfect time to talk about the locations. You've got to be there. On uh, Tuesdays, Tony. Mm-hmm. On Tuesdays, we're at the Northwest Financial Center, which is at 13831 Northwest Freeway. We're in Suite 215. That's in Houston, Texas, 77040. We take place at Tuesdays at 7 p.m. and on Saturdays at 10 a.m. You don't want to miss it. Um, actually, tomorrow is another great workshop, which is our workshop two, um, to tr- trying to build a strong financial foundation and proper protection. Because guess what? If you're going to have a will, you want to have some in it yes you gotta have something in it where there's a will there's a way <laughs> but hey my favorite is my hashtag is wheels and not bills so yes. but you gotta have something in that in the wheel not the you know, bills a, yeah, will, a will provides a way it provides a way for your next generation mm-hmm. and it also provides a way for your legacy absolutely so that's gonna be my new hashtag mm-hmm. where there's a will there's a way mm-hmm. so um Wednesdays. Tuesdays doesn't work for you. Wednesdays an option, okay? That's out in West Houston. The address is 11111. That's 5 ones, Suite 100, um, Katy Freeway, um, Houston, Texas, 77079. Wednesdays at 7 p.m., Saturdays at 10 a.m. You know, both of these locations, by the way, also are sponsoring Lunch and Learns. Ours is the second and fourth Friday of the month, 12 p.m. to 1.30. Come have a bite to eat on us, but fill yourself with plenty of financial education that you can use and that will help you to become a better personal money manager. Absolutely. And our next uh, Lunch and Learn will take place on September the 19th from 11.30 a.m. to 1 o'clock p.m. Uh, you don't want to miss it. Uh, we're going to be discussing um, health and wealth, and it's going to be great. Yes. Mm-hmm. Ours is September 14th, I believe. But, you know, we're here every week, so we can keep you tuned in. Mm-hmm. Now, if neither one of those locations works, there's also a location in Pearland. Pearland. Okay, so Pearland, Texas. Uh, the address is 11233 Shadow Creek Parkway, suite number 255. That's Pearland, Texas, 77584. Okay, uh, that's Mondays. There's an overview. And then Thursdays, there's a workshop. So there's no excuse. There's a way for you to get this thing done. If none of those work, hey, call us, one 4463 We can hook you up. We have locations all over the U.S. and in Canada. And we can meet with you one-on-one and share information, okay? So uh, you can also How much text that cost? us. How much does it cost? Free. What? Free. Free? Free. Free. Complimentary, free, Absolutely. free, free. F-R-E-E. So F-R-E-E. So if it doesn't cost you anything, take the excuses off the table and yeah. just attend. Attend a workshop. Um, uh, it's guaranteed to change your life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So you've got to get plugged in, you guys. You've got to get in the know about your finances and how you need to be active instead of reactive. This is a definitely a reactive situation. Ooh. Now, her family is in serious conditions. Like the, the article says, it can cost you a lot of cash. Absolutely. So let's go back to the article. And it says one reason wealthy and famous people often put off creating will is that they don't want to have their information made publicly uh, publicly available. That's what I just said. All their businesses out there. 
Okay, but I mean, hey, a trust, on the other hand, will divvy out assets over time and keep your information completely private. So they have options. In this particular situation, there needed to be a trust because Mm -hmm. there's a large estate. Mm -hmm. So if you choose to create a trust, it's often um, prudent to still write a will as a catch-all. Amy Joyce, partner and Parlagon winner and Evans told Fox Business. This is because things like jewelry often aren't accounted for in a trust mm-hmm. and can go overlooked. However, there is still a way to maintain your privacy and use this strategy. Joyce said by writing a short will stipulating that all your assets be transferred to the trust. You can cover your bases. When no plans are in place, Franklin was notoriously private about her finances. Mm. However, without a will or trust in place, her property will be dis- distributed in probate court by a process known as in-state, in-state secession. And we're going to discuss that later in the show, which will result in all of her finances becoming public. So either way, you still it's still public. It could also take years and a lot of money to sort out the financial details pertaining to her assets. Wow. Okay. So, Mm. hey, there you go. So, it's like either way, I mean, I much prefer my situation to be in my control than when I'm gone. It's just splattered all over the concrete. And you know what I was thinking? I was like, okay, she had four adult sons, and I'm so surprised that Mm -hmm. uh, none of the kids even stepped up and said, Mom, you know. yeah, even if you're you're, you're especially parent, when she became ill. Yes, because I, that's what I was going to say. When my grandmother became ill, my mom was able to step in whether she wanted or not, mm-hmm. and she was able to secure power of attorneys and things like that. Right. Because my grandmother was not of sound mind to do those things, so it allowed my mom to step in. And so, anyway, you guys, there are solutions, but you've got to seek help. Okay. Speaking of seeking help, you gotta seek help for your dental situation. Um, <laughs> we're going to our first uh, sponsor in this portion of the show, and that's Elite Dental Wellness. So, at Elite Dental Wellness, our vision is to create create a welcoming practice that will offer exceptional dental care and a lifetime of dental wellness. We are con- committed to the finest possible oral care and the overall health and well-being of our patients. Elite Dental Wellness is built upon the foundation of integrity, expertise, and service. Through our commitment to modern dentistry, continuing education, and friendly atmosphere, we strive to make our patients feel that they are part of our family. Dentistry can be scary, daunting, and uncomfortable. Dr. Pratice and her team work tirelessly to assure your comfort. Make your appointment today with Dr. Ashandra Pratice at Elite Dental Wellness by calling 713 780 Eight nine eight six eight zero. There you go. There's the bling for you. Yes, you want to make sure that your grill is right. Yes, mm-hmm. gotta do it. Gotta do it. Okay. So you guys, like we're saying, um, you know, this show is so important because often what I like to say is that people don't put the wheel process on the burner. You know, like they say, oh, I'm gonna mm. get to it's on the back burner. It doesn't even make the burner. It's not even on the stove. Mm. You know, it's still like in the pantry somewhere. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I'm going to bring it out. You know, I'm going to wait till the right time to bring it out. Well, the right time is if you own anything. Mm. Can you push that button right there? Yes. (laughs) Um, If you own anything. So uh, you cannot belabor this. Right. Okay. Don't do it. Okay. Let's go on to the next article. Mm. And this article is pretty interesting because it sets the stage. Uh, for what happens if you die without a will? Because mm-hmm. people keep asking me right, this. Right. So I was like, we got to discuss this on the show because I've gotten more than, you know, a dozen questions about it. And, you know, we try to stay in our lane. I'm not an estate attorney. Right. Um, uh, I can guide you in the right direction. It is a part of the strategies that we put together for you. But if you die without a will, it means you have died into state. Into state. Into state. When this happens, the interstate laws of the state where you reside will determine how your property is distributed upon your death. This includes any bank accounts, securities, real estate, any other assets you own at the time of death. All your stuff. All your stuff, right. Real estate owned in a different state. When where uh, a different state than where you reside will be handled under the interstate laws of that state Mm -hmm. where the property is located. So the laws of interstate secession vary greatly depending on where you were, where you 
whether you're single or married or have children, in most cases, your property is distributed in split shares to your hires, which could include your surviving spouse, siblings, aunts, uncles, nieces, nephews. What well, I don't want, I don't, I don't want all them to have. <laughs> Generally, when no relatives can be found, the entire state goes to the state. Get out of town. Okay, you we, guys. You got to get out of town. I got to right. get out of town. <laughs> We got to get off Facebook Live. It doesn't last forever. You got to go this moment, this second, this moment right now and go subscribe. Go subscribe to The Money Factor on The Sphere. Uh, And while you're there, we would like for you to write a review. You know, jump over to iTunes and write a review. Uh, We'd love to hear what you have to say. Um, Your compliments, constructive criticism are appreciated. While you're there also, you can please share the show. We don't know who you know. We say that all the time. We don't know who you know, and we don't know all the people that they know that they know. So that's how we get this thing out, by word of mouth, by sharing. And we can do that in a broad broad array on social media. Now, you can also donate. Mm. We provide this show to you completely complimentary. uh, But if you want to advance our cause, help us, you can by donating. You can donate one time, or you can become a regular donation patron if you'd like. Either one of those options is there. Either one you choose, we like it, we love it. Go do that right now, this second, this moment, right now. The show is not ending, but Facebook Live is. So to watch the show in its entirety, you do have to subscribe, okay? So let's go back to this article. Yeah, this is pretty interesting. Because, Very interesting uh, stuff. I, I don't know anybody who wants to stay to have uh, access over all of their belongings the state gets to have it hmm. and you know how many people pass and not have somebody that Absolutely. a lot of a them a lot of people a lot of them mm-hmm. you know and so we're just talking about you know banking up you know filling up the pockets of the state is that really what you want to do Hell no. no so you got to take <laughs> care of your business let's yeah. go back to the article tony yep. absolutely if you die without a will uh well let's see no, where are we down to, to uh single with no children single with no children if you are single and childless your parents will receive your entire estate if you are both if they are both living otherwise it will be developed among your siblings including half siblings and your surviving parent if one parent has already died if you have no surviving parents at the time of your death then your entire estate will divide up among siblings and equal parts If there are no surviving parents, siblings, or descendants of siblings, nieces, and nephews, then the relatives on your mother's side will inherit one half of the estate and one half uh, passing to the relatives on, I believe, the other side. Single with children. This is a big one. Yeah, if you lot are single and have children, your entire state generally will go to your children in equal shares. If your child has died before you, that child has any children, then his or her share will go to the grandchildren. Marry with no children. Depending on how your assets are owned and you die, your estate will either go entirely to your surviving spouse or community property or split between surviving spouse, siblings, and parents if separate property. Uh, Let's see here. Marry with children. Now, this is also another big one. If you are married with children, your entire estate will go to the surviving spouse. If all of your children are the children of your surviving spouse, otherwise your surviving spouse will receive up to one half of the estate with the remaining portion of the passing to their surviving children from another spouse or partner. Uh, you guys, you got to take this seriously. seriously. Man, yes. what so I think. blended families oh are Oh my there. gosh. But check this one out, LaShonda. Unmarried couples. So y'all shacking, eh? Mm. Dying without a will can be devastating to an unmarried couple who are living together because intestate... It does not accommodate. Yeah, look, the laws of the recognize that the relatives unmarried couples do not inherit the property of the partner when the partner dies without a will unless there is a will which clearly states that the person's intentions when they die that the descendants property will divide up among relatives and depending on their relationship to the descendant hello i bet y'all didn't know that you better get a will hey let me tell you because I there's especially in the day and time that we're in right now, people are like, no, we don't have to get married. 
Okay, but you're accumulating things together. Right. Well, there's rules for that, and they're not favorable when you're not together, especially those people who have been in relationships for a long time, and there's no legal, there's no legal join, adjoinment of the relationship. Hey, you're not entitled to anything. How about when states that have, um, what do we call it here? Uh, this is community property or common law. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to an estate, you see, that's that. They that's, don't care that's nothing about that. Because that's, that's off the table. Because that's what a lot of people think, though. That's, no. that's what they're thinking. That, well, that, that's my husband. I've been with him. We live well, together. It comes into play in certain circumstances. But when we're talking about estates, and again, this is not our lane. We're, 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 we're sharing with you guys from the experts. If you want to dig deeper into this, we have experts to help you. Right. You've got to reach out to us, you guys. This is not this is not funny. OK, you know. The little flip it talk we have in passing mm -hmm. about I don't have nothing, I ain't leaving nobody nothing. Well, you really won't be leaving anybody anything. Right. But you do own some things, okay? And in a lot of cases, because y'all are not disciplined enough to get some life insurance. Oh, I love that word now. What'd you say, girl? Y'all not disciplined enough to get some life What's insurance. Y'all are not disciplined enough to get some life insurance. So guess what? Your family has to figure out how to bury you, and they might need to tap into the funds you have, the pennies you have left in your bank account. And use that to bury you. But guess what? They can't get to the pennies because you don't have a power of attorney. You haven't handled your business. Mm. This is not a joke. So they it doesn't make you don't have to have millions floating around for this to be applicable to you. If you have anything, this is applicable to you. You know what I'm just thinking about? Let's just talk about the common person today that works so hard for your retirement for the money that's in your savings your checking account your home your cars you do have something girl but wait a minute we're about to get into it when you when you die and you don't own that home you still own a mortgage that's coming up next Ooh. so you guys listen 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 linda i was gonna say the same thing <laughs> listen linda listen linda <laughs> you have got to get serious yeah. okay that is why these buttons we're wearing are so important because the world does not care about what you know. But in our national campaign for financial literacy, we care about what you know. Right. We're trying to educate you so that you don't make fatal choices that ruin everything that you built for your entire you life. So hard for. You worked so hard yet. You end on a sour note. I mean, somebody even said that, you know, so she labored and toiled, talking about our, you know, our queen of soul, Aretha Franklin, for the win, for the win. And I'm talking about the wind, the blowing in the wind, because now her whole estate is blowing in the wind. Right. Isn't that crazy? That's crazy. It's crazy. That's crazy. Wow. Well, what's not crazy is this portion of the show is being sponsored by The Sphere. Are you starting a business or looking for a place to advertise? Do you have a need to reach out to thousands of people across the world and have your brand or, or to build your brand or sell your product? If so, get your product placement and advertising needs handled right here at The Sphere. We offer a wide variety of content delivery platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Stitcher. Plus, we have a vast demographic reach within the United States, as well as modern countries across the globe. Our enriched content and inspiring dialogue, coupled with the strategic ad, is surely to hit the mark every time. Call us today at area code 832-772-7789 or send an email over to advertise at the sphere.tv. Yes. Boom. Boom. <laughs> now. Let's get back because this yes. is this is juicy. Juicy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we're talking about a myriad of problems happening. Happening. I mean, it's like it's a snowball. Okay. It starts with one. You don't have life insurance. Mm -hmm. Okay. So then that ball just gets bigger and bigger, bigger and bigger. Because actually, you guys, the most, the more liabilities you have, the more coverage you need. Right. The more assets you have, the more coverage you need. Absolutely. Because that's that's again. Life insurance is not just about you being buried. It's about protecting what the taxes so yeah. that are due on the estate that you're building. Wow. So can you say that again? Because I okay. just had that conversation with someone. They said, oh, no, I'm going to be self-insured. You know, I have this going on. I have these properties. I have this and that. I said, but you know what? You still have to protect the assets that you have. Okay. Here's the problem. You guys are too smart for your own good. Mm. You're too smart for your own good that you don't listen. Linda. Linda. You must 
listen okay you don't know what you don't know listen. and what you don't know will hurt you when it comes to money listen okay I don't care what you think you know. Right. You don't know everything. You don't know what you don't know. We're trying to help you, okay? So that's the first part, Tony. You don't have any insurance. The more you have, even the more reason that you need insurance, because you don't even own all of that now. Mm. Now the government loves that you build an extravagant estate because they own a large portion of it. And the only thing that will mitigate the cost from what you owe the IRS and you keeping is some life insurance mm. because it will allow you to take care of that without tapping into your estate. But you don't listen. Just saying you're not listening. So you've got to stop thinking that you have things under control. How about get some professional help? And make sure you have things under control. Absolutely. How, what's wrong with that? Especially when it's free. That's what I don't Especially get. Especially when it is free. So there is no excuse. You can't say you don't. Aff you can't afford it because if you're bragging about the size of your estate, then money shouldn't be a cost to protect it. Hello? It shouldn't be an issue. But there's always an excuse mm -hmm. for. Lack of discipline in taking care of your business. There's no excuse. There's none. If you're watching our face this morning and listen to our voice, there's no excuse. Right. And I know this show is going to reach a lot of people. But, you know, that's we've become the excuse country where we're just used to making excuses for every single thing. For not having this, for not doing this, for not doing that, for not having this. You guys, it's not right. And it leaves a burden, an extreme burden on other people in your family or it leaves the state rich right and especially in our community guys we, we have to do better we have to do better we constantly keep telling you the same things over and over again and now i'm know, fired up yeah because I, <laughs> I i know you hear us yeah but you're just not taking action and you don't want to listen you don't want to listen you got to change your mindset um you know it's, it's, it's really wrong it's the wrong it's wrong the way we think that's the biggest thing do you know that we spend more time convincing people to take care of themselves than doing anything. Yeah. The, the bulk of our time as professionals is spent, Tony, why don't you do this for you? Tony, why don't you do this for right. you? Why don't you do this for your family? Don't you love your family? Mm -hmm. The majority of the time spent is trying to convince people to take action for themselves. It's not even for us. It's for you and your family. And the crazy thing about it is you know you need to do it. And you know you need to do it. I know, I know. I know, I know. I, we'll do something yeah. about it. Yep. Let's go back to the article. Sorry. I had to say it. How about domestic partners? You go ahead. <laughs> It's okay. <laughs> Special <laughs> rules apply to domestic partners. Since not all states recognize domestic, domestic partnerships, it is important that you check on the laws in your particular state to learn how properly is distributed upon the death. Why Generally, are you checking up? <laughs> <laughs> Generally, if you die without a will and are survived by a domestic partner, your domestic partner inherits the same as a surviving spouse, and depending on how you own the property. Because of the state laws vary, it is important to check on the estate planning laws of your particular state. Don't delay. Get a handle on your estate and with the help of an attorney. Since Hello. A, uh, yes, estate planning can be quite complicated. It may be wise to speak to an estate planning attorney in your area to fully understand what may happen in your particular case. If you die without a will, the attorney can help you draft a valid will and give you some peace of mind. Okay, I, I have to focus on that word. Valid. Will. Because I've actually sat with some people here recently. Oh, I put my own together. I looked at that. I'm like, uh, what is this? <laughs> you know, and that's what the court is going to say. What is this? Right. Holes and gaps everywhere. I mean, you haven't considered everything. These are things you don't want to try. It's, you know, DIY is not for your will. Get a professional. Mm -hmm. Not right. do it yourself, Will. Or going on do Google. It yourself, you know, because we're trying to be cheap. Mm -hmm. But we don't want, we don't care that we spend money on things that don't matter. But 
this matters. Ooh, I know you're going somewhere this morning. Yes, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm, I'm traveling down the road. I'm Tony Sanders this morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see what yeah, you all brought out the beast out of her this yes, morning. You know, because this doesn't make any sense. Yeah, yeah it's, it, it, it's, it's quite crazy. It, it's really sad. It's crazy. It's really sad. Next article. It gets crazier, okay? Mm. Let's talk about probate lawyers, fees, and billing. Mm. How the estate will pay the probate lawyer, okay? How how you going to pay, okay? How much will it cost to hire a lawyer to handle your probate case? The answer, uh, answer varies greatly, but it will probably depend more on where you happen to be filing the probate case than on how complicated the legal work is. You can hire a lawyer to handle the whole probate case or just help uh, you do it. See, working with the probate lawyer. Either way, keep in mind that as an executor, you don't pay the probate lawyer's fees from your own pocket. You can use estate assets to pay the bill before the inheritors get anything. Right? I want to stop right there for a second. Mm. So this is where we say that not having your things in place can decrease the value of the estate. Because if you don't have the money to pay for it, Mm. then guess what? It comes out of the estate. It's deducted from the estate. So, again, going back to life insurance, it can provide the funds to take care of these things. Right. Let's go back to that. Because now you haven't paid for it. Now you got to pay for the lawyer. You got to pay the taxes. Child, y'all better get some life insurance. Hello? Just saying, mm. kinds of fees arrangements. Lawyers usually use one of the three methods to charge for probate work. By the hour, a flat fee, or percentage of the value of the state assets. Your lawyer may let you know how you pay, for example, two fifty an hour mm. or 1500 flat fee for handling a routine probate case. Hourly billing. Many probate lawyers bill clients by the hour. Why? Because y'all ain't got y'all stuff together, so they make more money on you by the hour. Mm. The hourly rate will depend on how much experience and training the lawyer has, where you live, and whether the lawyer practices in a big law firm or a small one. Small town rates may be as low as one fifty an hour in a city, and uh, in a city, and rates of less than two hundred an hour would be unusual. Big firms generally charge higher rates than a sole pr- practitioner or small firm unless a small firm is made up solely of a hot shot specialties okay a lawyer who does not uh, who does nothing but estate planning and probate will likely charge a higher hourly rate than a general practitioner the advantage to you is that a specialist should be more efficient Someone who has steered many probates through the local court has probably learned the local rules and how to prepare and file, how to prepare and file documents the way the court likes them. If your attorney employs less experienced lawyers, associates, and legal assistants, paralegals, their time should be billed at a lower hourly rate. This is very common in firms that do probate work. Legal assistants often draw upon the routine paperwork. Many lawyers uh, lawyers bill in minimum increments of six hours, one-tenth of an hour. So if your lawyer or legal assistant. That's um, like six minutes. Uh, six minutes. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Six minutes. So if your lawyer or legal assistant speeds up two minutes on a phone call or half of the state, you'll be billed for six minutes. Flat fees. <laughs> Go ahead, Tony. Six minutes. Six, six minutes, minutes. Six minutes, Dougie, Dougie Fresh, you're on. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> we <laughs> had to do it. About. Yeah. How about Go flat ahead. fees? It's also common for lawyers to charge their probate clients a flat fee. That way, they don't have to keep down-to-the-minute records of how they spend their time. Lawyers don't like keeping track on their billable hours, and more than clients like paying for all of those six-minute intervals. And because they have a good idea of how long an average probate will take, they can charge a fee that will be close to what they would get if they bill by the hour. If you're billed by the this way, you don't have to worry about running up the bill every time you want to speak, uh, ask a question of the lawyer. It can be more relaxed experience. If you agree to pay the flat fee for illegal work, make sure that you understand what it does and does not cover. For example, you may still have to pay separate court filing costs, fees to the record documents, and the appraiser's fees. 
How about the percentage of the estate's value? So, wow, if it's really big, this is the worst way to pay for probate lawyer. From the estate's point of view, this is, is, a, is, a two, is to pay a percentage of the value of an estate as the fee. The customary only in a few states, and even in those states, lawyers are not required by law to collect a percentage fee. You can and should try to negotiate the hourly rate or the flat fee with the lawyer. But many lawyers prefer the statutory fee because it's usually very high in relation to the amount of the work they have to do. States allow lawyers to charge a set percentage fee in Arkansas, California, Florida, Iowa, Missouri, Montana, and Wyoming. These fees are high under the circumstances because they are calculated based on the gross value of the probate assets, not the net value. For example, if you're handling an estate that includes a house worth $300,000 with $175,000 left on the mortgage, the lawyer's fee is based on the $300,000 yes, and yes. not on the one twenty five of equity that's in the estate actually owns the actual wow and the probate paperwork for transferring one million dollar house basically is the same as transferring a hundred and fifty thousand dollar house so why should the fee be so different well uh, you can get an idea how high these fees are by looking at california statutory fee schedule for ordinary services as a lawyer collects the 4% uh, on the first 100000 of gross value of probate estate, 3% of the next 100000 2% of the mm. next 800000 mm. and 1% of the next $9 million and a half percent for uh, the $15 million. So a imagine reason, a, a That's what I'm thinking estate. about, Aretha's mm -hmm. estate. A reasonable amount of anything over $25 million? Well, usually the system... Uh, Probating the typical California estate with an estate value of five hundred thousand would be cost about thirteen thousand in legal fees. A very large amount given to the amount of the legal work involved. The estate do much better if they pay the lawyer by the hour. Wow. You do much better if you have a will. If you have a will. So that's that's the point. What's the moral of the story? The moral of the story is get your documents in order mm -hmm. so that, or if you refuse to do that, at least have some life insurance. Right. Enough to be able to cover these expenses because here's what's happening to people. They get to this stage. They don't have the fee money to pay these fees. So then, Tony, guess what they end up doing? They do estate sales. Mm -hmm. Selling off things to be able to come up with the fees to be able to probate the estate. Right. And and, and so then, I mean, if they don't come up with enough, guess what that stuff does? It just sits there in state and, 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 and probate keeps clocking. The, the, the dollars keep clocking. So and you're making things more complicated. So, again, can you afford not to have a wheel no matter what you have? No, you really cannot. Uh, it's very affordable. Very, very affordable. You have to reach out to us. You guys, we have, you know, people in our networks that are attorneys that can assist you in this process and uh, is there another article okay so now there's you know something else I want to bring up quickly we didn't really get into it much but if you guys have children that are under the age of 18 mm. this really complicates thing because now you're not just dealing with your assets you're dealing with guardianship mm -hmm. and so guardianship also needs to be con considered if you have a child you are not promised to be able, or none of us are promised anyway, but you're not promised to be here today, reach adulthood. So you always have to have something in place for guardianship. If something happens to you, and most of these cases happen by, you know, being diagnosed with a serious illness mm -hmm. or being sudden death through a right. car accident or right. some type of accident, and now you have guardian children, and now everybody's fighting over who gets the kids. Well, the state gets to say who gets to kids? The state gets to say. So it makes me think about a family friend who recently was married and um, had a newborn baby. And she, she died a couple of months after giving birth. And I'm like, wow. Because anybody can come in and say, oh, no. Yeah. That my I daughter, mean, you know. Because you have that child belongs to two grandparents. Two, two grandparents. Which one is going to get the child? Mm -hmm. You can't say, well, we're going to split this up six months here. Six. The courts is not going to do that. Wow. Someone's going to have full guardianship over that child so again we didn't get into that in depth today but i'm just putting you know thought in your mind things to be thinking about especially if you have children we're excited to have the children but we have to also protect the children if we're not there to provide we're for not them there. absolutely yes.
All right. So this portion of the show is being sponsored by KOG and Company. Are your unique gifts and talents changing the world? Well, Unleash Your Dopeness is a people empower movement built to encourage the masses to operate outside their fears and have the gall to recklessly pursue their dreams and passions in life. Join thousands of others as we unlock the greatness that dwells inside. Shop dope gear at KOGpassion.com. That's kogpassion.com and use the coupon code DOPE D-O-P-E explanation point for 10% off exclusive Unleash Your Dopeness apparel. Act now. Sizes are selling out fast. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> I see what you're saying. See what, what I'm saying, saying about this will and things? Though? Uh. You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? <laughs> okay. So the other thing we want to do, uh, you know, we can't get out of here without, you know, running over to uh, the Saving Your Future book, which you guys should have. Mm-hmm. If you don't have it, shame on you. You have to reach out to us, 1 844 4463, or you can text us. You can text 31996 in the message field, type in ask H H O F, all one word. And you can reach out to us, okay? Not to mention, what? we have all these social media sites. You can DM, oh. EM, inbox, hey, whatever. Look, just just contact us. You have to get in contact with us. Google us. Yes, you can reach us on all the social media platforms. Um, you can reach us on our website. Uh, however it is that you need to get in, you just need to get in contact with us. You know, one thing, is, we've been saying this for over 100 episodes, 100 plus episodes. Mm-hmm. You got to get this book. You have to read what's inside of here. It will absolutely change your life and your family's life so that you can have the things that you you desire in life so you can retire with dignity and leave that legacy of generational wealth for your children's children so that you can create a will and have something in there, okay? Correct. Um, So definitely you need to get the blue book. Get the blue book, read Mm -hmm. it, but you have to apply what you Mm, read. Absolutely. Don't just be reading it, you know, because you guys just be reading it. Well, if you're reading it, they don't want you to read it. it. (laughs) Yeah. First of all, read it Mm -hmm. because some of you have it in your possession and you have not even opened the book right so open it read it then do what it says Mm -hmm. okay and and it doesn't even say to do things it just gives you definitions but in that book you it will expose what you haven't done it will bring about awareness of what you need to do so let's go to the book uh we're specifically looking at page 83 and 84 it says estate planning few people think about estate planning of course if people do uh, don't do much in terms of savings, investing, insurance, estate planning, uh, will not be in the uh, priority list. It, right. it won't. We just said that. Most think estate planning is for rich people who live in mansions high up on a hill. But in fact, everyone has an estate. Your estate is everything you own minus your debt, such as your house, car, money in the bank, family, heirlooms, etc. Imagine you work hard your entire life mm. and built up an estate. You want to pass it on to someone, but it ends up with someone else due to your lack of planning. Thus, a will or trust is a tool for you to organize how you want your estate distributed when you pass away. Wills, Tony. Mm. A will is a legal document that allows you to distribute your property to those you are of your choosing. It allows you to assign specific items from your estate to one person and the other items to another person or an organization. You can also name an executor, the person who will carry out your wishes. Wills also give the opportunity to pick a guardian of your young children. The guardian will be responsible mm-hmm. for their welfare mm-hmm. If you don't have a will, the government will use your their standard will to decide how to distribute your estate, and you may not like what they do. Most people don't like what they do because <laughs> it wouldn't it wouldn't be what they would do. Yeah, you know. So to prevent that, you have to do it yourself. And you know, uh, another thing is, I hear people saying, "Well, I don't want to talk about that. Let's not talk about that. Mm-hmm. Let's," because you have to talk about it. Um, what what are you going to wait until you can't talk about it? So you're not able to talk about it. And then, you know, it's still an issue of, again, mindset. You know, your mindset is wrong. If you think I shouldn't talk about it, if I'm talking about it, I'm calling down death on myself. We all going to (laughs) die. Yes. You all, we all are. And unfortunately, most of us are going without this in place. So let's go back to a trust. We'll look and see what that is. Trust, a will only takes effect after you die. Mm -hmm. However, a living trust can benefit you while you are still alive. Living trusts are generally revocable, which means you can always make changes to them. With the living trust, all your assets like your home, bank account, stocks, 
and bonds are put into a trust administered for your benefit during your lifetime and then transferred to your beneficiaries when you die. Most people name themselves as a trustee in charge of managing these assets. Thus, you have control over it. You can also name a successor trustee in, in case you are unable to manage the trust. So having a trust is like you creating a corporation where you put all your assets in it and you run it or have someone run it for you. Living trusts may cost more to prepare, fund, or manage than a will. Having one, uh, having one helps to avoid probate costs for all the assets in the trust. Mm -hmm. You have to understand the benefits of these things. So thus, you should have a will or living trust to take care of your family or else the government will do it. Proper planning with professional help can be very important for you to leave a legal and uh, leave a legacy and preserve your state for the cause you worked all your life for. Absolutely. So this is pretty simple, you guys. You know, I like that it says most of us don't think of it because we think, well, I don't have anything. So this is not applicable to me. But you do have something, okay? Now, based on what you have will determine the complexity of how your will is set up or right. if you need a trust. But if you own anything, like a bank account, uh, yeah, you, you have to say, like I said, in uh, lots of cases, if you pass, people are going to need to access those funds to do some things for you or just to access them. You can't Absolutely. leave them in there and let the bank own them. Mm -hmm. So there has to be things in place legally to do that. We leave, live in a country where there's legalities around touching other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. And if you don't take care of that, then the state touches your stuff and owns your stuff and then says how your stuff is distributed. So is that how you want your stuff handled? Absolutely not. No. Mm -mm. Take the time and do it. Reach out to us, please. LaShonda J at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. And I'm Tony S at HoustonHousewivesOfFinance.com. You can reach us again on all our social media platforms, including Instagram. We're on Twitter. We're on LinkedIn. We're also on Meetup. But guess what? We're on Facebook as the Houston Housewives of Finance official. official. If it doesn't say official, it's, it's not, not us. us. So make sure that you're reaching out and so that you can get a blue book. How about your strategy? When is the last time you had a financial strategy yes. done? When's the last time you had an annual review? Mm. on the strategy that you have mm. so there's so many when's the last times you have to ask okay go to bed with peace of mind you guys get your affairs in order reach out to us our services are free okay mm -hmm. our support to you is free so what you end up doing yes that's something that you're responsible for but our support to you is free we just showed you what an attorney's going to cost if you don't handle your business mm. we also just showed you what it will cost, little to nothing, if you protect your things in a trust, if that's applicable to you. How will you know what's applicable to you? You have to reach out to us, okay? Let us help you. Definitely come to the workshops. It will teach you these things in more detail. You'll have a workbook to write in, some to take home and review. You've got to get engaged, get involved, get serious, okay? And if you don't, there's consequences for it. Wow, big time. Big time consequences. It costs you for what you don't know. Yeah. So get in the know. It, it It's a benefit to you. Absolutely. It's a benefit to your family. It's a benefit to who your heirs are going to be. And it's definitely something that you need to do. It's yeah. not negotiable. This you is know, not negotiable. Yeah. You know, you can't afford not to. You just can't. You cannot afford not to take care of your financial future and you the planning. The planning is so, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. And uh, unfortunately, that's why a lot of us are failing because we never put a plan in place. We never seek the help that we really mm -hmm. need um, to move forward um, to correct some of the mistakes that we've made. So, again, it's just about you making up your mind to make a decision to take some action. Just a decision. It's just mm -hmm. a decision. Why don't you decide today that I'm going to take care of it? I'm going to make this phone call. I'm going to reach out to them via text. I'm going to reach out to them via social media. Mm -hmm. I'm going to reach out to them via their website. I'm going to reach out. I'm going to reach out. It takes a couple of minutes to change the course of how your assets have been built. Okay. So you guys, let's get real. Let's get serious. Let's get in touch with us and we'll be able to assist you. So it's been, an, uh, this has been a great show. Absolutely. Yeah. Lots of information. Wheels, not bills. Yes. You know, where there's a will, there's a way. All right. Okay, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.